Do you remember when laptops were this thick, had socketed CPUs, and were consumer repairable? You do? How's your back doing? So yeah, today we're taking a look at the Dell Inspiron 1150, a Windows XP laptop from the early 2000s, which I picked up at a car boot for five pounds. It's fully working. It has a Intel Celeron processor, half a gig of RAM, a 25 gigabyte hard drive, DDR-ROM reader as well. Uh, and today I wanna see if we can put this to use, save it from e-waste and actually make a good little DOS emulation machine out of this thing. So we're gonna get DOSBox running on here because Windows XP's DOS compatibility isn't the greatest, but we can still play some really great DOS games using DOSBox, which fully supports Windows XP. Uh, but before we get to that, let's take a look around the laptop itself. And I also want to tear it down because the fans are particularly loud. So I think it might need a bit of a clean out. It definitely is going to need new thermal paste. So we might as well, let's get into it. Let's have a look. Um, I am actually going to do a separate full length teardown video, like unedited. Um, if you're interested in that, that will probably come out on Thursday. But before all that, let's take a look and let's get it cleaned up. So this really is quite the chunky boy. Um, it's going to kind of struggle to keep this all in shot, but anyway, yeah, just look at that. That is like well over an inch thick there. Uh, but on the front, we have the laptop lid clip. We have some power indicator, a charge indicator, and a battery indicator, one or the other. Uh, the battery in this is completely dead. It will only work. Um, on the mains, but that's not surprising in the slightest. I probably could still pick up a, uh, a spare if I wanted to. So moving around to the right hand side, and for the most part, this is this is actually where the battery is, which is quite interesting. Um, that's not kind of traditional for modern day laptops, but the battery is in there. Uh, you've got a modem, again, not something you're gonna see anymore, and some grill vents for the fan as well. And then around the back, you have more air vents. And in fact, I'm not sure if there should be something here, but you can literally see into the heatsink fans there, uh, the heatsink itself there. So yeah, there's that. Power plug. This presumably was something extra, maybe. I'm not sure. Another air intake, maybe. Two USB ports, a VGA port, and an Ethernet port as well. And then on the left hand side, you have your expansion card slot, very popular on laptops at this era. You have a headphone and a microphone jack, and then you have that DVD ROM drive as well. And that's it for IO, pretty limiting on the IO, I must admit. Uh, but this really was quite a budget laptop, even for its time. Okay, so with the uh, laptop actually open up now, uh, this is inside, we've got our Intel inside, Celeron sticker there, which is starting to come away. Windows XP, the world's smallest trackpad, really does make you realize how big trackpads have gotten and how much better they are. These kind of tiny little things are so annoying to use. Two big buttons down the bottom, and then the keyboard itself, which to be fair, isn't bad. It's kind of standard laptop keyboard for the time. Power button. And an, I think that's a, it says there's an eye on it, an information button. Not sure. Interesting. Uh, but that, again, not much going on here. One thing that is quite interesting is the Windows key is up here. It is not down here. We have a function key here, uh, but no Windows key. So, so, and then just looking at the screen, there's nothing else here. There's no webcam or anything like that. That definitely predates that. Just a nice matte screen. All right, we are going to get this teared down and cleaned up and uh, then let's get some gaming done.
So I just want to say we are still an incredibly small channel and only about 2% of people that watch my content subscribe. Uh, so it would mean so much to me if you could hit that subscribe button and of course like the video as well if you're enjoying it. Uh, every single interaction really makes a difference for small channels like mine. So thank you very much and let's get back to the video. This continues to, of course, be my favorite version of Windows. I have to admit, this is this is my childhood Windows right here. It's Windows XP. I did use Windows 98 and 95 a little bit, but XP was where it was at. That was definitely what we were running at high school and, and kind of where most of my initial real kind of use of computers came from. Um, so, yeah, can't can't deny that this is definitely the place to be. So it's fair to say that this is a pretty underpowered machine, and that's kind of why I'm definitely going to be steering towards DOS games. However, we can definitely give it a go with a couple of other games from the 90s and just see how they go. Uh, so for those, we will fire up Fraps just so we have a good way of measuring um, our frames and just seeing how things are going. And let's start with, of course, the classic Half-Life. The classic, the OG. So a load up has, of course, is a good way to kind of benchmark. And we are running We are using currently using DirectX 3D at 64 640 by 480. I mean, it's definitely playable. Obviously, it's a lower resolution, but yeah, you could definitely play this. There's no problem there whatsoever. Uh, solid 30. Okay, it dips when new things are loading in. It's, yeah, entirely playable, which is cool. But you can see that you're not going to get much more performance out of this. Let's just try upping the resolution. So as yeah, as as you might expect, trying to run it, oh, trying to run it at native resolution, you're starting to struggle a little bit. It's still, it, it's still hitting thirty-ish, dropping down a little bit. I will say uh, as well, using the trackpad is is horrible, absolutely horrible. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, it's it's not bad. It's not it, it's certainly playable actually at native resolution. So there's not bad, but this is Half Life. This is a game that is designed to be able to be played on a potato. And yes, other games from the '90s will definitely play things like the original Fallout, Tiberian Sun from C Command and Conquer. They work. They're functional. But I don't really think that's where this kind of level of hardware shines. They were definitely never made for really good 3D accelerated games. But I think with some DOS games, we could really do something nice here. 
Okay, with the uh, camera jigged a little bit more, I really do want to get some sort of VGA capture card going on, but uh, we don't have that at the moment, so we're stuck with just recording the screen, unfortunately. Nonetheless, let's get DOSBox fired up, and let's mount our DOS games, and let's give it a go. So I have a folder on my uh, hard drive called DOS, which is where I've kept all my DOS games, so we can mount that as our C drive. And then if we head over to that, we can see that we have a couple of games to try out. Obviously, one of the best games that we've got to have tried out on here has, of course, got to be Doom. Must admit, one of the things to get used to is uh, the controls in a lot of these old games, but here we are, original Doom, and it is running flawlessly, absolutely flawlessly. The fans are picking up a little bit, not going to lie. Yeah, sorry, I'm just playing Doom now, but this just runs absolutely, absolutely flawlessly. It really is a great game. Another great game from the era, uh, as a Star Wars fan, was Dark Forces, which was a lot of fun. This is the demo for that game, uh, but still. Such a great game. Again, such a great game. I'm sorry. This video is mainly just me playing old games now. But that's kind of the point. Of course, another game we absolutely have to check out. It's got to be Duke Newton 3D. So, okay, in this situation, audio isn't great but the game itself it's playing pretty well i would say certainly completely playable of course it's not just First person shooters that work well on here. Other games of the DOS era also working really well, like SimCity 2000, which does have full mouse support. Start a new city and uh, everything is kind of working as you would expect. I'm pretty sure if we. Pretty sure we can change the resolution as well. But uh, yeah, I must admit, I don't think I've ever played. Um, SimCity 2000. I played the later SimCity games, like 3000, but I don't think I ever played this one. Um, I might have to give this a go at some point, like properly. At the moment, I'm just kind of messing around. Uh, but yeah, it works. It works pretty well. And other things as well, like a lot of platformers also work really very well on here. For example, Commander Keen, <laughs> I 
But there you go. There are some games from the DOS era that are working flawlessly. And I dare say that many, many more will also work perfectly as well. This really is a great way to repurpose some old hardware or just get some gaming for super, super cheap. At £5, you've got a machine that's capable of playing a lot of real old, brilliant games. That's for sure. And there you have it. So I have to say, even on pretty puny hardware, uh, DOSBox still works very well. Now, yeah, maybe we could actually get something like Windows 98 installed on here if there are drivers about for the different components to this laptop. That would be cool as well. And obviously, we could probably get some more like native DOS stuff going on and not just use relying on DOSBox. Uh, but even as it is, for £5, to have access to a machine that can easily play all the DOS games you could want, uh, that's not bad. It's definitely saving this device from landfill. There is still value in these machines. There is still stuff that you can do with them. And I know you can run DOS games on using DOSBox on modern hardware. That's perfectly fine. But there's something quite special about such a chunky boy laptop. Uh, and going back to kind of those early days. I distinctly remember using these laptops at high school. Uh, so these are definitely kind of hold a bit of uh, nostalgia for me. And being able to find a good use for it as well is great. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you have had fun. And maybe this gives you some idea on things that you can do with some old hardware that you might have floating about. Thank you very much for watching. Of course, if you have enjoyed this video, please do hit that like button and subscribe. Uh, we are still a very small channel. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye for now.